This week, conflict zone is in Berlin, as the European Union tries to find a way forward in the face of major challenges, such as Brexit, economic stagnation and military conflicts on Europe's margins. My guest is Emma Broek, chair of the European Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. What is his recipe for Europe? Emma Brook, welcome to Conflict Zone. Let me quote Article 2 of the Treaty of the European Union. The Union is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minority. Does the European Union still care about these founding principles? I think so. I think so that we try to meet this criteria. Trying is not doing. No, trying is doing, but we do not so achieve the final result. So you don't that. do so enough. It's we do not do enough and there's always a conflict, especially when you come to foreign policy. It's but the, the conflicts increase. The conflicts increase, but we have always in classical sense a way that you have the values and at the same time the interests and find the right balance between. That is always a very difficult question and how far you can go, go follow, uh, following your interests by not destroying your position towards the values. But are you not destroying the values? No, I think the European Union does a lot. The European Union itself has created values that, for example, debate with Poland at the moment about the, the position of the Constitutional Court is fighting for the you values. You are debating of, without results. No, we are going, we're achieving, we're going forward. Yeah, Hungary told you that you can do whatever you want with Poland, the veto will be. That, that means will. no result. We are not so far that we are already uh, in, the European, uh, in the European Council with this question. And we go forward with that and I think there's already some achievements and we'll get it. And Hungary itself had to change its judicial system, its media policy in a certain way how f so far the European Union has influence on that. And this has, so within the European Union... But yourself mentioned Hungary, Poland, other states, where you will say the rules of Article 2 are not respected anymore? I think they are more or less everywhere respected, even in such countries, but not fully. And uh, we have, uh, I think... Oh, you, not, you are not half pregnant. With civil rights, you respect civil rights or you don't? In all these questions, you have the goal and you achieve most of it. But because we are imperfect, we never get it to 100%. We have always battles between the individual parties, groups, power questions. And so that. let's, let's so talk the about the Union itself, compared uh, to the history, is a great achievement, a great achievement in the question of peace, freedom and values, compared to our past. Uh, so let's talk about your 100%. Uh, there is clearly a crisis of trust in the Union. They are anti-EU movements in Italy, in France, in Germany, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom. People clearly mistrust the EU. That is true. No, this is not just a question of uh, the European Union. It's the question of mistrust of the whole political system. Because well, in the EU or worldwide? If I see the debate in the United States with Mr. Trump, you see that it is even in the United States. Yeah, the same but we case. are talking about Europe. Why this movement is increasing? Why are they so successful? We have a situation that many people in Europe do not trust the elite. They do not trust the political elite, they do not trust the economic elite, and many other questions. And this loss of trust is one of the most dangerous questions for democracy. This is not just a question for Europe. Le Pen is originally a clearly internal French movement, which used now European questions. It would be a mistake, uh, and we would not see the seriousness of these problems, if you would concentrate that on Europe. But let's talk about that, because you mentioned it, Le Pen. In a few months, there are elections in France, and Le Pen is today one of the favorites. Uh, what will this have for consequences if, after the Brexit, France will be leaded by a president, Madame Le Pen, who is right-wing, who is a racist party, and an anti-European party. If a country like France would go in such a direction, 
it would be a disaster for France and all of Europe. What means a disaster for Europe and France? It means they're going to the past, going back to nationalism. It means that the old uh, uh, anti-feelings of nations will increase again and that we go back to that time before the war uh, that Europeans fight each other and not to try Which to means it. it would be the end of the European Union. I believe so that a country like France would do that. It would be a major threat in such a direction. Major threat or the end? I can never say it's the end. It might be that in such a case that a lot of countries would even closer work more closely together to overcome this situation. But it's a pillar of Europe. Germany and France are pillars. And uh, France is also uh, a part of the Euro, uh, Euro group. France is an important country and I think uh, Germany and France together are the cornerstones. And therefore, the architecture of Europe would be dramatically damaged if uh, such a situation would be in France and I'm confident that because of that the you pen will not... because you want to dream or because you don't have a plan B like you didn't have it for the Brexit? Do you have a plan B? I mean a few months, this can happen. What is your plan B if France will be um, governed by Madame Le Pen? Uh, we have a plan B for Brexit, and we will do it in with Brexit. We will go forward. What's your plan B France, with France? France? No, we will. The Democrats will win the elections. She will not get fifty percent. This win is the your election. plan. That is, I think, this clear. This is plan A. This is a <laughs> clear perspective, and I do not mention that plan B before the plan A is not has not failed. That would be but, totally but wrong. wrong. But, but I'm totally confident. We have seen also in the regional elections that Le Pen has no chance but to win the presidential election. But you were also totally confident a few months ago that the Brexit will not help. That is not true. I belong to these people who said it, it, it might go wrong. And, it uh, might go wrong. Okay, so continue. let us continue with these ideas. UK, Front National, alternative for Germany. Doesn't the growth of national movements show that the idea of the EU is failing? No. It's a test for the idea. We have to give answers to the questions. And certainly there are people, because of internal and external security, consequences of globalization, that part of our society feel that they will fall down in the workers' class and in the middle classes, partly. But the voters come both in Brexit as in Le Pen and AfD. It's mostly the same type of voters, like it is in Trump. And how can we win these voters but back? But nationalism, and xenophobia and racism is not a new invention of the last years. This is Europe. Perhaps the inventions of 30, 40, 60 years cooperation instead of confrontation was uh, a moment in history. This situation works at the moment because of the uncertainty that people feel. And it, also the migration question is one of the problems uh, to that. This feeling of secure insecurity, both in economic, social, and internal and external security questions. Here, the, the people believe that they have to go back to the nation state, which is totally the wrong uh, point to do that, because the solutions uh, are only possible if we do it together as Europeans, because these threats come from the outside. And here we have to convince but, but it that the threat um, is in the inside. The EU is in an existential crisis, isn't it? The member states are in this situation. It, but uh, they are the owners of the EU. Yeah, but uh, the member states have a problem with their majorities for democratic parties. And this is not just a European question. This is a question of internal uh, politics, of national politics. It's everywhere. Le Pen started not because of European policy, but because of uh, national politics. We have to see it as an overall problem to fight nationalism and racism and so on. I, I we have not really explained to our people that only European uh, solution is possible. Only together we can fight the root causes. Only so together we can finish the war in Syria where 12 million uh, migrants come on. And only together uh, we have a chance uh, that less migrants come over the sea and die in the sea and not by fences. But listening to you all together, I mean we are now really in the year 2016. All together, the solidarity of the European Union, where is it? Uh, the borders are closed, are open. There is not um, European military action. Um, solidarity, the refugees' discussions and conclusions were not respected by Hungary, by Poland and other countries. Altogether, 
I mean, we are not Sunday, we are Monday to Saturday, we have to work and not only to speak. We have now the migration question under control. We have it under control also with the agreement with Turkey. We have not 10,000 migrants per day, but 100 per day. This is a great achievement of European policy. In this relocation question, you're right, there's a lack of solidarity. But this is not just Hungary or Poland. We are not so far developed. European Union is not yet a state. Yeah, yeah, and we have to see that Germany, until May last year, was against relocation, said they should stay in Italy. We are calling in Germany for solidarity since they come to us. And the Poles are going at the moment against relocation in the same way so the as German we did one another. So had double standards? I think that sometimes the discussion in Germany has double standards. Let's speak about another issue where the population had the impression that politics are not uh, listened to, uh, to the people. Let's take TTIP as an example. Uh, the proposed trade deal with the United States, you defend a deal opposed to 70 by 70% 70 of Europeans' voters. You are not listening to the people. 70% are again. I am elected for my position and I will carry through my position and this is the wrong position they will not re-elect me. That's democracy. We need leadership. We have seen and that leadership means um, not to respect the majority and the will of the majority? I respect the will of the majority in elections, not in opinion polls. The opinion polls is, uh, to follow opinion polls is giving up responsibility. I think this it's is also a, one of the... It's a cheap way of excuses not to do your job. Okay, so I, I believe this is also one of the arguments of Chancellor Merkel. Um, you are a prominent manga, member of Angela Merkel's Conservative Party. The party is struggling, isn't it? For sure. I think if we have problems in the society, we have a problem in the party. Uh, and then you have debates there. But that it's the question of democracy. Uh, we have at the moment a leadership, uh, which I think is a responsible leadership. Uh, they follow the difficult way because they believe it's the right way. And we have also to differentiate. Only is the TTIP coming back, for example. It's only in Germany and Austria where these negative yeah, yeah, results. In most of the other countries, sounds, they're in favor of TTIP. Yeah, that sounds good, but all the surveys suggest that uh, Merkel's uh, policy is losing support, the party is losing support, and surveys suggest the reason for this loss um, is the support of Merkel's refugee policy and that the, the population are not with her in that point. We have to become better to, to and uh, have to be more convincing. But we discussed, they discussed Who is we, Ms. Merkel? We. That, Mr. Is my, that is my party and that is Mrs. Merkel and the government. And we have to see, we started this debate with values. We should stick to values. And that means that we have to follow the Geneva Convention. Of, we have to look that people do not die in the sea. And we have to look up for people who are refugees of war. And here I do not follow opinion polls. No, that but is, you, that perhaps, is, that but is my you position have, of yes, values, what great, we have to do. But you are not governing. Uh, Ms. Merkel is governing. Angela Merkel is not listening to her conservative allies, and she needs these allies to have a majority in the Bundestag in Bavaria. Um, they take every opportunity to attack the refugee policy. We could even think they are the opposition, the government, but Merkel just brushes that aside. She says there are, uh, quote, old xenophobic attitudes behind it. Does the CSU has a xenophobia problem? I think that I admire Mrs. Merkel more and more that despite this pressure, she sticks to the values, even risking her political life. And that makes her strong, and that will make her strong again to win elections. Is the CSU, with a policy they are uh, declaring day per day, um, a xenophobia problem party? That is not, I know all of these people, but they follow too much the pressure of these opinion polls, the pressure of public opinion, uh, the pressure of uh, certain feelings. Populism. Whatever, that is populism and partly. CSU, is CSU now and making part of populist part, it's policy? A, it's, it's in a populist uh, situation. And uh, I think uh, here we have to be within the union, with Mr. Merkel in the leadership, strong and clear. 
that so you let's, do not go in the wrong direction. Let's try to be strong and clear on a clear example. The CSU new policy paper says migrants with a Christian cultural background should get priority if they want to come to Germany. Uh, if this is not religious discrimination and against Article 2 of the European Charter, what is? I'm very much for that, that we look also after Christians. This is, at the moment in the world, the most uh, endangered religious group. But to make this differentiation in that way as a CSU program is not acceptable. But when the CSU have, is doing it. But I'm against that. I tell, say that publicly and we have a debate about it. Uh, and uh, I believe then if we have to save a life, you should not ask which religion, which race, which belief the person has. Yes, but let's talk about the Eastern European countries. They reap enormous benefits from the EU refuse to share the heavier burdens. For example, the settlement of refugees we talked about and are happy to disregard for the fundamental principles of European law. How long should the EU tolerate this? We have to convince them. The old uh, Polish government in last autumn had agreed to take refugees. It's a new government there. So it's... Uh, when did they agree? At, uh, in the late summer uh, uh, nine, uh, 2015. Ah, so, uh, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, uh, 12 months after this decision and agreement. No, before. It was done before the election, and we had a debate about relocation yeah, but in September going on. last year. Yes, and I this said government 12 agreed months. to that. Then they had elections, and a new government came. So it's not a total all of opinion of, of Poland, it's the opinion of this government. But we the government is representing Poland, yeah. being a member in the and EU. But I want to make clear that it's not a Polish population as a whole. So we know about that. Differ we're differentiate it. Secondly, we have a problem in all former communist countries where. The, these people were told over decades something from abroad is a bad thing. And they, and they do not know what foreigners is. We have the same debate within Germany. This is the same reason why Pegida is in Dresden and not in Düsseldorf. But and Mr. this situation is there. These former communist countries are in the development of the society not so far to understand this. You are describing, this you question. are explaining. But um, agreements are not respected. So if the European Union is not respecting their own agreements, why somebody has to respect the European Union? We have also a big of differentiation in, in Germany between the lender very often. And I think that even Poland has now said that they want to take responsibility, but not by taking migrants, but financing but the root the causes. But taking the money. The not by financing the root causes against migration. That is an important step forward. We have 28 nations. How and nations much did with a they different spend history. to this promise till today? That is an agreement Mrs. Merkel achieved three weeks ago. And uh, we have uh, to do uh, in our budget for next year something about that, which includes since also Polish policy so, and Polish so, money. So continue, let's continue with the Polish government. I agree. The EU has launched an investigation of the change Poland has made to the media law and the constitutional court which do not abide by EU laws. Why can't Poland be obliged to follow EU law? Because all EU law is binding. Uh, but you cannot go with an army to another nation. Uh, and therefore we have to do it in discussions, negotiations, and we have a clear procedure. We're in the middle of this proce procedure, we will see where we come at the end of the day of the procedure. But Mr. Orban, Orban told you that whatever you will decide, he will have a veto, so why are you starting if you know that you will not be able to conclude look, it? Look, Mr. Orban is an intelligent man and he knows when it is time to make a compromise. Um, when did Mr. Orban, the intelligent man, as you said, made compromises in the last six months? He had made compromises in his own cases, in the media law and in the judicial system, in order to fulfill the obligations so far the European Union can ask for these obligations. And in this way, Orban was much more intelligent, less ideological as Mr. Kaczynski is. There are other opinions about that. Last week, Minister Esselbaum called to take Hungary out of the EU for their, I quote, massive violations of EU fundamental values. 
And you are saying Mr. Orban is going on the right way? First of all, this is wrong. Mrs. Osborne had should, had, should ask for the procedure in that case. And uh, all states, even his party colleagues, are against this statement by Mr. Asselborn. Yes, perhaps politically it is not quite correct, but uh, taking in consideration nationalism, um, racism in Poland, in Hungary, in some in other Hungary, countries. In Hungary, for example, Mr. Orban is not a racist. He's a nationalist? He's a nationalist. What is more important for him, the nation or the EU? I think uh, the nation. What uh, is the idea of the EU? We have to combine nation and Europe. Uh, Equality. I believe that also in the United Europe, we need for a long time the cultural identity of the nation. To cut away the nation would be the totally wrong approach in the United Europe. Do you think that Europe will survive with the attitude of leaders, like the leaders of Poland, like the leaders of Hungary. Do you really think that this will be a future? We will, the have, policy they we are will have in 20 odd countries always government, which many of us might not like. But that's the way of democracy. Okay, this was, a, diplomat have, this was no, a diplomatic one. No, that I believe in that. We have to live with that, we have to continue with that. This European policy does not mean that everyone goes in the same direction. We have the same fights between the Bundesländer in Germany, in different party political levels. And this Europe is the normal case. We have in Germany more internal fights about politics Would you as we have in the European that Union. All the Länder in Germany are on the ground, on the foundation of the Grundgesetz. And would you agree that all these European countries we are talking about are really on the ground of uh, the European Article 2? Human rights, yeah, dignity. I, I believe so. I no be discrimination. I no discrimination of homosexuals in some of these countries. No discrimination of minorities in these countries. I believe so that we have an incredible development where we achieve that. There might be government sometimes in one or the other country, but I will see, for example, in Poland, that several more times 500,000 people go to the street to fight for the rule of law. Then I'm proud of such a country like Poland and we will support these people. European Union means to that we go in all in this direction. We will have failures. We will have always failures in such a question, but we have no instruments to bring it together that it's much better than without the European Union. Without the European Union, we would have no chance to influence Hungary or Poland in such a direction. And this we were successful with all the limits we have to see and we have to see because they are independent nations. But you have to close your eyes, people are saying, to fulfill uh, such a hope. There is another country where the European Union and also Germany is accused to close the eyes, Turkey, who are, as uh, others are saying and reporting, violating human rights before the coup and after the coup even more. What are you saying, Mr. Erdogan, about that? I have, say, I have said to him, with this policy on internal development, free media, uh, freedom of religion, and, 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 and. You will never make it to the European Union. A Turkey in this development... But he can be the can, ally. But we have to talk, uh, stopping the Syrian war. We have to talk to Saudi Arabia, to Tehran, which is a proxy war, and we have to talk to Russia, and to have a peace. Yet 12 million refugees can go home. We have to talk to all of them. We have to differentiate between the standards to become a member of the European Union or the standards to talk with people, to have agreements. If we do not talk to such countries, we could not talk to two-thirds of the countries in the world. Nobody asks not to talk with them. The question is, what are we talking with them? Let's, let's uh, have a perspective of the next month. The United States of America, Mr. Trump, will be the president. Um, in May 17, Madame Le Pen will be the president of France. My fantasy goes not too far, so far to follow you that that will be the result, especially in the last case. This is your wish or this is your reality? In the Le Pen case, I am sure that this will be the result as Mrs. Le Pen, the not president. Oh, of that's the interesting. You said in Le Pen's case. That means in Trump's case, you are not so sure. I'm not so sure. That's unfortunately so that I'm not so sure. I see this populist movement 
work there, as we have in some European countries. There's a different system of electoral, and we have to see this Mrs. Clinton. Let, I would prefer. Let me ask you a last situation. question. I mean, when Mr. Trump will be the president of the United States, what is your opinion about that? This has to seen whether then the Western alliance has still the full credibility that the United States is sticks Mr. to its values. Is Mr. Trump credible? In my opinion, no. He not, has not the credibility, but he has a chance to prove it. And uh, it's still until November, some time to go. And I hope that Mrs. Clinton will recover both with her health and with her popularity. Emma Brooks, thank you for being on Conflict Zone. It was a pleasure. Thank you.